The whole video is again in Truth Rising. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, he is a lawyer. We'll get his take on that. Get into some serious issues. And if I beg him, perhaps a bit of a roasting. LionelMedia.com. He's a ex-prosecutor and criminal defense trial lawyer from the great state of Florida, or F Florida, as uh, they, he wrote a little joke there. Uh, and it goes on, old uh, school country music devotee who worships at the altar of George Jones. Well, don't we all? Uh, and it goes on, uh, talk radio host since 88, morning drive, afternoon, WABC, WOR, Premier Radio Network, Internet Radio, Court TV, Air America nationally, every talk radio format concerning the gamut of political and uh, sociopolitical ideology. Watch nightly on New York's PIX11, that's the big news station, uh, where he gives news commentary seven nights a week, hardworking guy. Uh, broaching and addressing subjects no one in the mainstream media will ever think about, much less expose or explain. First Amendment constitutional strict constructionist, civil liberties warrior, one of the first in the media, mainstream media to address TSA gate rape and gropings, focuses attention on the disintegration of the latter and spirit of the Constitution, the letter and spirit of the Constitution, the disintegration of personal freedoms, Fourth Amendment erosion, the systematic disintegration of Article I's war power provisions, systematic habituation to increase government intrusion and surveillance, political atheist and unapologetic realist, voted by Talkers Magazine, heaviest hundred, most important talk radio host of all time, LionelMedia.com. And for public school educated folks like myself, L-I-O-N-E-L, -E LionelMedia.com. Dot com. Lionel, great to have you on, my friend. Alex, it is indeed a pleasure. And I've got to tell you something. I, I, every day I have listened to your show, and I've listened for I don't know how many years, my blood pressure goes up. I actually physically, viscerally respond to this. I get sick every single day. You make me sick. In a good way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm serious. There is not one show. There, there is not one day that goes by where I, I turn to my wife and say, "What country are we living in?" Number one, two. Where are the mainstream media? Where are these narcotized, zombified sock puppets? What are they talking about? Do you know that today the big story is in New York? By the way, thank God you're not in New York for a variety of reasons. The president's here and Justin Bieber's here. That's it. And if you walked around and listened to local media news, you swear that's, those are the only two things that are happening on the planet in front of everybody in full view those are the stories, and I'm looking at your website and listen every day, and I swear to you, my blood pressure is going up, my diastolic is through the roof. I don't know if I can take this anymore, and I don't know how you do it. I've, I've heard, and if anybody who's ever, you know, I've, I, I study your show, Alex, I love it. And I've devoted a lot of time to it, and you've been a great inspiration for me and LionelMedia.com. And when I talk to, to Michael Harrison from Talkers, and we both have said, you've got to get this person on to introduce him to, you know, mainstream conventional talk radio. Because what you were doing, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't mean to be laudatory, and I'm not trying to, to you know, blow smoke, as he say, or be fawning. And I meant this when I introduced you in the pantheon, in the history of radio luminaries, the people who in latter day have changed the face of this. You've got to give credit. Forget ideology or style. Rush Limbaugh, Howard Stern reintroduced people to the AM dial. AM dial prior to them was known for two things, at least in most uh, jurisdictions. One was, and the other one was, and it was like Spanish radio, or it was static, or you could tell when the lightning was coming in. They were integral. Add to the mix you and what you've done, and I mean it from the heart. You have redesigned and re-implemented a delivery system that the mainstream media folks better pay attention to, because this is not the future. This is the present. The sky is the future. Well, Lionel, what do you want to get into first? You want to roast me first, or you were saying you wanted to talk about the talkers' conference in the aftermath of uh, well, of well, that? Well, I got to tell people. I got to tell people. You, you you've got to imagine this now. Again, I in fact I I spoke about this on LionelMedia dot com and and. Saturday morning, New York, it's, it's first thing in the morning. Now, folks, you got to understand this. People are quiet. They're, they're wiping the web from their eye. Perhaps maybe it was a late night. I get to buy and do my introduction, and they're sitting there with their bagels. You, you notice the people who are around the, the bagels and refreshment table, the, the schnorrers, as they're called, you know, getting it for free. So they walk in, they sit down, and they say, oh, yeah, Alex, you know, yeah, okay. Yeah, I've heard of them. 
And all of a sudden, it was Elmer Gantry on speed meets Howard Beale meets whatever, and they didn't know what to make out of this. And I said, that's my boy. That's Alex. That's the way to do it. <laughs> so anyway, as we were talking, people said, you know, I, and, and let me tell you something, and this is serious, and, and Michael Harrison of Talkers and others are, are paying attention to this. You know, Alex, as I get older, my, my hearing is getting bad. And I don't mean my auditory hearing. I mean, I get bored real easy. So I need something to rev me up. And I'm going to say something. I have not listened to conventional talk radio in maybe 20-something years. Seriously, a whole show from anybody. It bores me to death. In fact, do not waterboard me. Should you ever want to torture me, Cheney, don't waterboard me or stress the positions. Just put on any conventional mainstream media talk show, and I will tell you anything you want to know within five minutes. Just turn that off. It's white noise. It's blather. It's rote repetition. It is mind-fearing, mind-numbing audio white noise. And it's, But you come along, and like I said, I'm... I'm, I'm as you can see what it's done to me right now. So anyway, so here you come along. Now, I told people, I said, what you have to do is, there are some moments of the Alex Jones show, which I think are the most uh, fantastic. My, I love when you say, get Watson on the phone. Now, that's the best. I tell people, pay attention to this one. Paul Watson, bless his heart, I don't know where he is. I don't know what he's doing. One time he was on his honeymoon. I recall her, Paul Joseph Watson, just get him on the phone. And he's a very, very gentlemanly British young man, as you know, and you said, Watson, um, Alex, yes, listen, I'm in the middle of my honeymoon as we speak, Alex. I don't want to go into detail. But, all right, Watson, I want you to do something. To break this down, Watson. They're microwaving kittens in uh, Moldova and selling them to uh, Eastern European... Uh, Alex, I can't talk right now. I, I'd love to do this. All right, you make a point of that, Watson. Get on it right away, Watson. Right now, have it. And you hear the man pleading with you, please, Alex, just give me my honeymoon. And it's like, listen, we, we are on a mission, and we're going to get down to business, and you can have your honeymoon later. He was I actually in course. bed, and, 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 I, and I wasn't thinking <laughs> that I was even on radio. I was like, that was on radio? And I, I guess he's like, it's midnight, Alex. I'm in bed, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> midnight for you, but the info war never stops. And I've got seriously. Let, let me tell you another another uh, example of why your your story is so important. And I have told people about this stuff. And what you have done is you are, believe it or not, almost like NASCAR. You ever talk to somebody who's never heard of NASCAR? It, they, they think it's I don't know some good old boy goat roper in the middle of nowhere, or like Smokey and a Bandit. And then they they become aware of the enormity of it, and they say to themselves, "Where have I been?" You're like that, and this other media are like that. You came along a while back with TSA groping. All right. So I said, this is not fair. Now, I am, as I said, as you said, a, an ex-prosecutor. That scared me more when I saw what people could do, Alex, in the name of us, in the name of the flag, in the name of government, in the name of law and order, the subjugation, little by little, the systematic subjugation of people's rights, and almost applauded to by people who don't know any better, who think they're, they're supporting, you know, Andy from Mayberry, who think that they're supporting something. And, and cops are not bad. I mean, I was a part of that system. But anyway, but you came along with this TSA thing. Now, sure enough, my wife and I were in uh, Tampa, my hometown. And everything was fine. We left. We are going to Tampa. We left uh, Newark, and everything was fine. Coming through, sure enough, they look at my wife, who was, most attractive. Yes, I met your wife. She is. She's. She's quite the number. She certainly is. And 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 believe me, I'm the luckiest man on the world, or in, in the world rather, or on the world. So anyway, so he looks at me. I'm going through the magnetometer. Aunt B's going through the magnetometer. Uber pie. Everybody's going through it. All of a sudden, this fellow looks at her and says, "You, we want to give you this scan." Now we had talked about this, and you had alerted me to this. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is a backscatter radiation. This is rapid scan. This is Chertoff, baby. This is, this is not some mild, passive little, this is radiation, uncalibrated, uncertified, virtually unknown. I don't know what you're blasting at me. And they're recording the images of her naked body. Yes. I mean, you know. We knew all about that thanks to Alex Jones. At least but Hugh Hefner said. would ask her and pay her money to be in there. <laughs> 
especially now because, as you know, Lou, uh, Hugh's not doing too well in his personal life. Anyway, so sure enough, they do this. Well, when she dares to say, I'm not going to go through that, he, again, all of a sudden, it's like uh, uh, Sheriff uh, Boss Hogg. It's like the Milgram experiment, Alex. The Stanford prison, all of a sudden, this glorified, sky cap, federalized, I don't know who he is, all of a sudden, this guy's authority is being contested by some little lady, and he talks into it. We've got an opt out. I mean, you know, and I said, I cannot believe. It's like in Star Trek. It's like in Star Trek. Whenever the engine room is blown up, they're like running around. <laughs> alert! <laughs> ah! I know, and I think, and people look at it. What has she done? And she says, "Why are you doing this to me? What are you doing?" Now understand something. This is the most amazing thing. I said, "Now let me get this straight, Sparky. Let me get this straight," which is a great way to start off all cross examination. You're telling me that because she has opted out. For this particular type of inspection, the very inspection, the magnetometer, which you prefer in 99.9% .9 of the time, that is not good. You must physically grope her to look for what? Now, of course, I'm taking pictures. I'm taking pictures. But thank God for the iPhone. Unless Steve Jobs gets a hold of that and ruins that little ability to record life. I think it's called the First Amendment. Yeah, they're now like trying that. to have little spy systems that uh, block you being able to record. Continue. And, Alex, thanks to you. And I mentioned this on LionelMedia.com. I mentioned this on my nightly commentaries. People don't, and, and you, you must run into this as well. People think, you're making this up. What are you? You're making this up. Making it up. It's true. I wish I was making it up. So anyway, now later on, to give you an idea, I sent this to my friends. Have you ever been to Israel, Alex? I uh, know I haven't. Okay, I've been twice. Now, let me tell you something. When you talk about real good at this stuff at the Ben Gurion Airport in Tel Aviv, they could do, Alex, anything they wanted. And believe me, most people would say, you know, they've got every right in the world. They could physically search you. I mean, they, they could do internal searching if they wanted, but they don't. Even they don't do it because they put their emphasis on intelligence. But think about this. When you have somebody who used to be in charge of the Department of Homeland Security, this mega, brobding, naggy, and huge governmental colossus who goes into private practice or private uh, lobby and all of a sudden has this unique ability to introduce these rapid scans. And by the way, there was a... I believe it was a Columbia University medical professor who said that, especially areas of the head, which are very, very sensitive to this type of ionized radiation, which we don't know how strong it is, how, how we don't know anything about it, but this is this is very, very carcinogenic, very, or, or has the... Yeah, that's even been in the New York Times, it's 20 to 50 times what they first said, they're not calibrating them, or even following federal law to have radiation tests on every month, and they gave Congress fake tests, uh, and then, of course, on top of it, what about the workers that are around it? They're the oh. ones that are really being fried. But, hey, why do they care? Let me tell you something. I, I told this guy one time, I said, let me tell you something, my friend. Believe it or not, I said, these people don't, don't, you're a young man, I don't blame you. Because, you can, You know, Alex, you look at these people, and I don't think they go into this wanting to, uh, to, to be, you know, stormtrooper-esque. I don't want to bring in Nazi imagery. I don't think they start off like this. But what happens is, let me tell you something. My friend, did, does the word Agent Orange mean anything to you? What does thalidomide, what, what, how, how nescient, how comatose are you? One of these days, you're going to find some walnut growth in your axilla, your armpit, and they're going to they're gonna deny, 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 and you're standing there. When you get a, an x-ray at the dentist, they put something on your lap. They don't care about you. And what's happening, Alex, and this is the most important, I, I, it, it, it's tragic, but it's true. There is this thing. It's almost, it's almost Skinnerian. The systematic habituation. 
the ratcheting up of more and more control, more and more submission, subjugating your rights, relinquishing your rights for a common, for a better good, terrorism, for for this notion of being safer. And what happens is, and forget the, you know, the, the, the fraud. Lionel, the stay there. You'll tell us what happens on the other side. We'll get into a bunch of other issues. As a former prosecutor, we'll get your view of people being arrested. Now, going back to Lionel, I, I, I know you've been exposing as a former prosecutor the fraudulent drug war. Uh, I know you're also concerned about this rash of police, not just arresting folks in their own front yards, but beating reporters up to a pulp uh, when they try to videotape them even from 100 yards away or private security guards coming up at city parks and saying, we're going to arrest you if you don't stop videotaping. I mean, they're acting like that the new Al-Qaeda is anybody with a video camera. Well, see, that's, that's exactly right. You know, um, uh, Alex, just a couple of things that I wanted just, if I could, just to pig piggyback on what you were saying. You know, your, excuse me, your, your, um, your, your whole set of, in fact, I watch it, I, I, I love what you do. You inspired me. Since 88, I was involved in conventional terrestrial talk radio, plain old talk radio. And I thought to myself, and I'm, and I'm serious about this, I said, I, I want to do my own uh, podcasting to say what I want. Not that I've been censored so much, but you'd be surprised just when you can talk without having somebody in the other room, uh, let's say a program director stare at you or somebody on a class tour. There's nothing like when you're in the middle of an impassioned speech or some Girl Scout troop walks through or you've got a salesman or you have to stop just in the middle of what you're doing because you've got to take a break, which is fine. I love commerce. I love capitalism. That's great. So what you did was when I formed LionelMedia.com, you inspired me. And I could do my podcast. Again, it's nominal. It's like the cost of a, I think it's a, 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 maybe a Starbucks a month. But this is, this is what's happening. And what I was saying, by the way, just quickly before we, I, if I could, what I did mention about you in our talker's uh, introduction at the New Media Seminar, which, believe me, I don't think in its history, since Michael Harrison did this, and he, it is the preeminent talk, radio, talk, spoken word journal on the market. But what you've done is, and I said this kind of in passing, it sounded like a joke, but you have literally figured every means of communication, if smoke signals could ever be tapped, you're going to be doing smoke signals. If nanotechnology, if, if goldfish flatus somehow gave out a message, you're going to conquer that. <laughs> I don't, you, you do DVDs, carrier pigeon, um, tapping on cell walls in prisons. If two people can communicate, the two cups and the string. And I say that because you have saturated this thing. And people say, how does this guy do it? And I'm saying, this is the most important thing. This isn't an act. But what people have to understand about what you're doing. And I know this sounds like I'm, I'm not being praiseworthy. This is true. You can't do, Alex, what you're doing unless you really believe it. Because your, the veneer will come off and you'll be able to see through the transparency so quickly if you don't literally eat, sleep, breathe what you're saying. And that's something which is a key. I want everybody in the talk radio industry to to, to listen to what you're saying. Have you ever met somebody, Alex, who says, oh, hell, I can do what you're doing. You can just talk for three hours. That's easy. Really, Sparky? <laughs> you really think it's easy? Well, I'll tell you what you do. You go into a bathroom right now, and you start talking. And do not miss a beat. Don't bore them. Don't have them click away because they've got nine million channels. You've got iPhones with more apps than you can imagine. Lure them. Compel them. <clears throat> Pardon me. Hold them over hour after hour. Never bore them. Be sincere, and you do it. And Alex, only you would know this. Have you ever felt when you're done doing a three-hour broadcast, and you are at you are at to use Spinal Tap lingo at eleven from the get-go? Do you ever find yourself feeling like you like your brain's been cored? You are emotionally spent. You. It is a a feeling of almost. Mental, emotional, exhaustion. no. That's why. No, that's it's almost every day. That's why I went from I got greedy because because once I'm on air, I have all these points I want to make, and I get mad that I didn't cover this issue. I didn't. My biggest drive is people being conned. I get upset by it, and yeah. and, and and I don't like snakes and con artists and all of their fakery. So I want to show people the magic trick, but then I realize that I didn't do it properly. I didn't tell them all of it, and then I feel 
guilty. And so then I'll all do a fourth hour. And then it's gotten to where over the years I have to go lay down on a couch for like 30 minutes. And on the way to the couch, there's salesmen popping up and your wife's on the phone and you're, she just right. dropped the children right. off. And uh, by right. the way, there's a city inspector here. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, two employees are fighting in the back. And uh, I mean, absolutely. And, uh, and, and, and Paul Watson's on his honeymoon. Paul, get up, Paul. <laughs> no, but I got to tell you something. There is something about this business, if you do it right, it's something that it is so important. I want to be corny for a moment. I, I say corny because I'm afraid of, 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 of two things. I think you and I are very alike in this respect. First of all, have you ever done a perfect show? I bet you'll say no. No, they're horrible. Everybody, if, you, if you ever think you say, how did I do that? How did I leave that out? Because that's a perfection. You've only got this amount of time, and you treat each broadcast like it's your last, like it's the only one. Oh, does this happen? That's Every time I'm going to go on a trip, I'm not afraid of death. I get afraid I can die in a plane crash, so I always do a whole bunch of extra stuff right before I leave. I know. Well, you know, one of the things uh, you and I share, uh, and by the way, another thing I tell people, uh, you can always tell a lot about a show by the bumper music. And you and I, I think, share an affinity for uh, the poet laureate of Texas, Towns Van Zandt. And I thought, how appropriate when I think of you, I think, you know, all the federales say we could have had them any day. And they didn't have interest, how interesting, how prescient and vatic and pythonic that is, that Pancho and Lefty, and how that is in many respects correlates to what you're doing. Because I keep thinking, and I don't mean this, please, I don't mean this, uh, uh, I don't mean to be cute about this, because God only knows what you go through that the public doesn't know about, how your beloved wife and family must say, could you just, could you baby just sell insurance, Alex? Please, you know, could you, you please, you know, this is a great calling, but we don't know, and I'm being very serious, the, the uh, sacrifices you make to do this. Because, because I, I, I keep telling people, you know when, you know, like you've said many times, you can tell you're over the target when you start taking flack. And as long as you hear Alex Jones on the air, you know he hasn't hit pay dirt yet. When he does, you won't hear him anymore. So your success is when we hear a dial tone, if they even have dial tones anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's a weird, the government, and it's not, by the way, it's not Obama, it's not Bush, it's the government, it's the superstructure, it's this... It's this amalgam, this Gordian knot, this hodgepodge, this, this, this almost supernal superstructure. They cannot let this get too popular and ruffle feathers. Because i got to tell you something, Alex. This is what I say on LionelMedia.com and this Twitter I love. I'm a Twitter fanatic. Another addiction I've got at Lionel Media. This is my dream. Not to, to in any way uh, steal from Dr. King, but I have a dream. And that dream, Alex, is that one day the government says this. When I say the government, it could be 20 years from now. Whoever's in charge, it doesn't matter. State, local, city, Austin, city council, doesn't matter. I want people in office to say, oh, no, no, we can't do this. They'll never stand for this. They'll be out in the streets. We will tick these people off. You don't understand them. They read. They know. They vote. Oh, no, no. I want the government to be afraid of us. I want them to tremble at the idea of making, not Alex Jones or not Lionel, or not, no, no, but, but anybody upset because it's the opposite. We quake. We live in fear. We are sheeple. We're habituated. Well, I think that's the most successful thing I've done, not even consciously, because I'm just outraged and mad. And, and, and it's not that I even have courage. It's in, in the face of a bully, I tend to attack, not run. Uh, I flee forward, really, is what it is. Um, it is that I've not been fearful. And I think that's been an example of people to stop being cowed. And I think the yeah. founding fathers said it. V for Vendetta repeated it. But George Washington said it. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. And it's really just that simple. Uh, and, 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 and government has gotten on a power trip. Control freaks have filled government now with bad folks. They're trying to kick out the good people. And uh, raising that point, uh, specifically as a former prosecutor, what's your view of the attack on the video camera? Uh, what's your view? Because you, uh, you oh were saying God. a drug war. Well, this, this is the thing. First of all, as far as this, 
you know, years ago, Alex, there was a there was this uh, kind of a firewall. There was a time when people actually paid lip service to this. CIA is international. FBI is national. Uh, NSA is this. And so there was this. It was illusory that there was this firewall, this compartmentalized. Your jurisdiction ends here. Today, some very smart people again think fifteen, twenty year increments. You know, this this is they've got whoever they is, but their things plan. The idea is that hey guys. I don't have to worry anymore about wiretaps. When I was a prosecutor, we actually had wiretaps. This is before technology. I used to prosecute, Alex. This is in the in the 80s, the early, well, mid-80s. I've seen phone calls. Well, guess what took care of that one? Caller ID. Hey, isn't that great? Look at this. Electronics are good. It's electronic keyhole. People, hey, I like that. That's terrific surveillance is your friend. What's happening, too, very quickly about it, I went to the cameras. In New York, there's a terrible, terrible, terrible case. These four innocent people were slaughtered at a, on Long Island at a, um, at a drugstore. And some, some pill-crazed pain nut came in and blew these people away to steal opiates, oxycodone. Now, two things. People were saying, isn't surveillance wonderful? Isn't surveillance wonderful? And I say, wait a minute. Surveillance is wonderful. Vigilance is wonderful. So looking out, doing, look, looking out for your neighbor, citizens' awareness, absolutely. But do not confuse a well-placed, privately, you know, a security camera, a closed-circuit TV, with omnipresent panopticon government surveillance 24-7. Do not make that mistake. Lionel, we're going to break. I want to come back and finish up with that and some huge new TSA news. How they say they're going to go after Texas now with their move to ban the groping. Is we'll be back. Drudge Report is linked to our article proving that the TSA said they stopped groping children under 12 last November and then again in April and now they've told us that it doesn't happen now even though I just watched it a few weeks ago when I flew to New York here in Austin and coming back uh, through uh, Newark. Uh, they're at Liberty or whatever the name of it is. Uh, we need to get this added as an update to the Drudge Linked article. TSA set to take legal action against Texas groping bill. They already had Perry's minion behind the scenes kill it when it had a unanimous vote in the House and near unanimous in the Senate. Uh, they had one vote, one vote against it. They had lined up. And uh, now, because of Perry being put on the hot seat, it's set to be voted on today. No, no, tomorrow. Excuse me, Friday. Feels like Friday because I don't ever have a day off. Uh, so every day is Friday, lusting after Saturday. But... Uh, to make a long story short, uh, they're threatening a blockade and a lawsuit, kind of like the feds always do. Uh, they couldn't pass the EPA carbon tax, so they just have the um, they have the uh, EPA do it, and then states are suing that, and the federal courts are ruling for the EPA. People thought that ruling earlier in the week was a good thing. That oh, the, you know, some states were calling for more carbon taxes. People thought oh, the feds say only the EPA can decide that. No, oh, that's terrible. They're saying the states have no authority. Why even have states then? But I digress. Lionel, it, it's awesome having you. I'd like to have you, uh, you know, someday uh, when I kind of have a smorgasbord of different hosts that fill in over the three hours, perhaps have you ride shotgun with Watson so you can tease him uh, the entire time. You know, he's the fill-in host. Uh, how do you like it when Watson fills in? I'll tell you what I, I I like it. I've I've I, I certainly you you cannot uh, replace you. Um, but may I, may I say something very quickly about why this is very important and why this TSA thing is? It is very important for this particular, and again, not the Obama administration, the government. Whoever replaces them will do the same thing. Alex, they cannot win. There has to be the message sent out that any attempt to thwart, to intercept, to stop, to, to interrupt the systematic uh, uh, complete control of people, their bodies, their persons, their communications, their computers, their apple. Everything will be fought viciously to give, and whether it means something or not, there might be people in the halls of justice somewhere that said, we don't care about TSA. It doesn't matter. We're going to teach these people a lesson. We are not going to let anything go. How dare you question your government? We're not a public servant. We're in charge. Your minions, your slaves, how dare you question us? This well, they call it anti-government.
to, to even have an opinion about what you want in government when that's what freedom is all about. Uh, in closing, uh, and again, folks, we're going to, I'm going to put out some special reports today on a host of issues dealing with this big TSA development. Watch InfoWars and Prison Planet and PrisonPlanet.tv. But in closing, next time you come back, we'll talk about it more. But uh, uh, briefly, your view on the drug war as a former prosecutor. It is absolutely the most ridiculous waste of time. It has resulted in, right now, a boon for lawyers and judges and jailers and the like. The reason why, the reason why people are involved in drugs is a very simple thing, either to use or to sell, and they sell to make money, and the reason why they make money is because it's illegal. So if you make something legal, that is not an endorsement by the government of its use. It just merely means, Alex, that if you possess something, you are not subject to criminal penalties. Do you know that if one of your kids, God forbid, had strychnine on them or, or cyanide, that may not be against the law. That's not a Schedule One drug because it's going to get you high. It'll kill you, but it won't get you high. Now, does that make any sense to you? No, there's whatsoever? stuff under every sink that'll kill you, better than a hammer, but because they don't hide put up and make it a big deal it's statistically it's not very dangerous uh, look they made the drugs illegal because alcohol prohibition went out and they had to have something else to give the corrupt system a cut of the laundered money and that's on record with the big banks caught doing it lionel awesome having you great job to the crew